Greetings viewers and welcome back. As promised, I'm here with Matt and he's going to help me uh, show you guys how he does his bases. Unfortunately, he said the one that I did for you previously is not up to his standards, so he's going to start from scratch and show you how real bases are made. So without further ado, he's going to go over all his materials here. Now I like to have the approach of as simple as possible with as few steps as possible and getting a, a really nice base. So we're just going to start with a base. Um, some cork that you can buy at any craft store. These also make really good tank traps. If you've got a, a large base, you can put those on there. But you can also break them down into these little pieces of cork that uh, make really, really good looking rocks once they're painted up. I've got here some acrylic paint, starting at black. We've got some shades of gray all the way to white. We will be uh, painting these little things to make them look like rocks, and they come out pretty amazing. Some super glue to glue the rocks down on the base. Uh, this bowl here is going to be used to hold a mixture of water and Elmer's glue that we are going to use to coat the base, which we will be pouring gravel on. Um, I like to use a coarse gravel because with the scale of Warhammer models, it just looks better than uh, having some um, larger grain gravel, but uh, you can choose whatever gravel. I also like multicolored gravel. This has a lot of lights and a lot of darks, and it just makes it look a lot better when it's on the... The base, there's going to be no need for dry brushing afterwards or anything like that. And once you're done, um, we will uh, let it sit overnight. And then when you wake up in the next morning, it will be a perfect looking base. And then here's some water just for uh, painting purposes. All right, so Matt's about to get started painting these uh, cork rocks for you. Just going to show you the colors he uses. He also uses folk art craft paints for those of you out there that may be uh, mini wargaming on a budget. So these are the ones that he's going to use. And uh, we'll let him start showing you how he makes these epic bases. Alright, so just get something. Some people use nails or pens or whatever. I just use a, a hobby knife again. I'm nice and simple here. You yeah, poke it on the end of the, um, the hobby knife. Make sure you pick what you want your bottom to be because obviously you're not going to want to paint the bottom because it's going to be on the base. So you want to stick it in the bottom and then you have every other surface available to paint. You start with the darkest paint. You just with the dark paint, you want to get all the recesses. That's that's the main goal with this uh, with the black. All right. So obviously the uh, rock is now black and it's dried. So I'm going to move on to the next step. You might find it helpful to water down your black when you're painting on this this part. That way, it just kind of gets in all the little crevices and recesses. It's right where we want that black paint to be. So what's the next step you're going to do here? The next step is actually going to be putting the gray on. Um, again, this is going to be a gray rock, but you can paint your rock whatever color that you find that you want. You can paint a brown rock or a green rock even if you wanted to. Um, we're going to be uh, putting down basically the base coat of the dry brushing. So you're going to get the paint on your brush, and this is kind of going to be a heavy dry brush. You're just going to dry brush the rock just like this all the way around it's very very light touch here very light touch you can kind of see the rock coming to life now And you can just put it on as as, uh, as thick as you want to. But the big thing is, is you want to get that texture out of the rock. Let that black be that bottom base coat and let this first heavy dry brush coat really bring out that detail. All right, moving on to the next layer of dry brushing. Again, this level of dry brushing is going to be even lighter than the one we did with the gray. So it's just very, very light, very light. You kind of want to hit the top, the tops and the high points. 
This is really good practice for dry brushing if you're, you're not too, uh, too good at the dry brushing aspect of things. But you can see how when you dry brush it, it just really makes the texture of the cork really pop. There you go. The last coat is going to be white, and for this, for this coat, this is going to be the lightest possible touch that you can possibly have on just the very, very tops of the corners here. Sometimes I just splotch. Instead of dry brushing, because you don't want to get that white places that you don't want, you can just kind of splotch the tops of the, the ridges with the white. And it really just makes those edges stand out a lot better. Gives you a lot more depth and definition of the rock. Because this is no longer a piece of cork now. It's officially going to be a rock. And again, you know, my, my rock's a little dark, it's a little black, but it's a black rock. I mean, again, if you want to make a brown rock or a green rock, you can do that. Um, but just using this basic technique takes very small amount of time, and you've got a really, really good looking rock here. All right, the next step's going to be gluing the rocks that we made onto the base. I use super glue just to have a really nice, strong um, bond between the cork and the plastic of the base. And the reason why I put the rocks down first um, is so, one, that it has a really nice um, surface area to actually attach to the base. Because if you're trying to attach it to the gravel, it's not going to have a, as strong as a bond. The next thing is, is with these being on first, the gravel, when you put the gravel on, can actually come up to the side of the rock. It actually makes a really good transition from your gravel up to your rock. So it's just going to be a really small amount of super glue. Very, very simple. Just make sure that you glue down the whatever side that you decided to be at the bottom. Alright, so now that we have our rocks super glued to our base, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create 50-50 um, little mixture here of Elmer's glue or PVA glue, I believe it's called, um, and water. We're going to make it uh, really, really thin and we're going to spread it out on the base. And we've got a nice thick coat of watery Elmer's glue on the base. That's when we're going to start applying the gravel. Okay, so again, just 50-50 here. Again, you just you're just wanting to get a watery consistency in the, the glue here. Um, so you know I say 50-50, but I don't know the exacts. This actually looks a little bit too watery, so we may actually add a little bit more glue. A little glob in there. Again, you just want it to be thick enough to where when you spread it, it stays on the base and it doesn't run all over the place. Because you don't really want to get it on the edges of the base or anything like that. So we'll go with this. I mean, typically when I have a, if you have a brush that you're using for this, when you're done you want to thoroughly clean it or else you're going to ruin your brush. I typically use the same brush all the time for applying this stuff. You want to be very liberal as you're applying this stuff. So feel free to just go back and to the, the well here and just get more and more glue. Don't be shy. Okay. 
you can see it kind of wants to stay right on the base. It's not going to break the edge unless you do uh, maybe too watery or you put too much on it, which I'll probably do here in just a second. just like that. So again, it's watery and uh, it's covering the whole base. You want to try not to get stuff on the rocks because then you're going to have gravel attaching itself to the rocks. So I've got this little thing here. You can make your own, but sometimes moving around at this point is really tricky. So you can just dump straight onto the base, just like this. Now you don't just want to dump it, you kind of want to do this. And what's going to happen is, is the gravel falls onto the base, it's actually going to start soaking up all this little watery Elmer's glue mixture that we have here. And the rocks can be a little tricky, see that area right there is kind of hard for me to get, so just come on this side, I'm going to make sure you get a nice even coat all around, even on the rocks here. And at this point, at the bottom, all that Elmer's glue and water is being soaked up into that gravel. And you can kind of just press it down right here at the top where it's still dry. And you're, want, you're going to want to let this sit for at least 10-15 minutes at the bare minimum to have the uh, Elmer's glue and water get absorbed as much as it can and also to start drying before you start kind of fill, filling with it. Um, so we'll come back and we'll show you what happens after that. All right, so I've removed it from the pile of gravel that I had there. And again, you know, my gravel is has light shades and some dark shades on it, and it really contrasts well with the black and the gray of the rock. So I picked that gravel that I have and the colors from my rock that I use. Um, but if you look now, you can see some of the gravel on top is still kind of loose. You can kind of knock that off, but you really don't want to have gravel and stuff coming off of your base while you're playing with them you got the, the game going or something. So what I typically do is I'll take more of my glue and water mixture and I will just drip it on top, just like this. And you can see it's getting absorbed in again. What this is going to do is this is going to seal in every single pebble of gravel on your base. And those, the rocks that you're super glued make really good uh, places to use to manipulate the base. Because you don't want to be touching the, the uh, gravel right now because, one, the top layer isn't completely bonded yet. And neither is the bottom layer. So if you start touching that gravel, you're going to start pushing it around and making spots and leaving some fingerprints on it. Just basically bad stuff. Again, don't be shy with the glue water mixture. Really glob it on there. Again, you don't really want to try to get it on the rocks, um, but if you let this sit for a few hours, let this, uh, this glue mixture dry up, it'll dry clear. You won't even see it anymore. It'll really bond every single piece of gravel together and make basically a seamless um, base that when completed, 
This is still a work in progress base. Um, there's a lot of surface area on the base of these uh, monstrous creature bases. Um, but you can see, you can, once it's all dried up, you can rake your finger across it and you're not moving any gravel. There might be a piece or two there that I'm moving. Again, this is still a work in progress. But it really seals all that gravel down onto the base. You don't have to worry about it uh, coming off or messing up your game table or whatever you've got, uh, got planned to play on. And it just really makes a nice seamless flat. It's just really, really great. You can even use it um, to attach models to. So I attached, I pre-attached the Riptide onto this base. Um, but if you want to not worry about getting gravel on the feet of your models or anything like that, you can put this glue mixture down, seal up all the gravel so it's nice and flat and sealed, and you can glue right on top of that gravel. So we've coated the base that we were working on earlier with the glue water mixture and this is I usually let it sit overnight before I start messing with it so and with that in mind we're going to move on to uh, applying some static grass onto the riptide base I showed you earlier that was work in progress now if you haven't played with static grass it's very very fine and can be tricky to kind of play with um, what I find to be best is using a liquid super glue and you can you know, create lines or draw whatever kind of pattern you want your, your grass to be in. And so if you use gel, it doesn't uh, doesn't kind of flow that, that well as you would expect like maybe grass to do. Then we use tweezers, we'll pick up a clump. Just dis distribute it and disperse it over whatever area we uh, just applied super glue. What you don't want to do is smash this stuff down. Just be very light with it. Let it sit for just a little bit. Looks like we have all the areas covered. I mean, on the back. There again, you don't want to be pressing down because the intent is for this stuff to be kind of airy, look like it's grass, blades of grass sticking up and down, and if you start pushing on it, you're just going to flatten all the grass down. It's not going to look right. All right. So again, we made a little pattern, you know, because grass kind of tends to um, grow in lines and all that stuff, and we're not we're not making a front yard here. Just tap it back into the container. And there you go, you've got grass. Uh, this is really nice grass. It's got all kinds of different colors in it. And uh, you can see they're standing up. They're going all kinds of different directions like you would expect grass to do. Um, it's not smashed down. It gives a nice, nice texture and a nice contrast to the gravel that it's, that's growing out of. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed this video and found these techniques useful. Thanks for staying tuned and all your guys' support, uh, likes, comments, feedback. If you guys have any questions or you'd like to see anything, please leave a comment below. And thanks to Matt for helping us make this project possible.